Hey guys, so in this video, we'll be setting up our first database and I'll also be introducing you to the Django admin panel. So by default, when we launched our project, Django actually set us up with an SQLite database and that's the default configuration, but later on down the road, you wanna use something more compatible for a production environment, something like MySQL or Postgres and you can actually change that from the settings.py file. So I'll just go ahead and show you where that's configured. And in this databases variable, this is where we're pointing to that database that Django set us up with. And at this point, there's no credentials just because it's a testing environment, but we'll be adding things like our username, password, and specifying the database type right here. So if you haven't migrated your database already, you'll notice this unapplied migrations comment every time our server is on. And what this is saying is that Django has already set up a basic database structure for us and none of these changes are being reflected in the actual database. So none of the tables are actually there. So what we need to do is migrate that setup with the actual database. And in order to do this, we need to run a command called python manage.py migrate. And what this is gonna do is grab all that setup and go ahead and build out those tables for us. So it gave us that default structure. And because we're running on SQLite, we don't have a way to actually see those tables. So we're gonna go ahead and just use the Django admin panel to, to view this. And before we go ahead and log into that admin panel, we need to create a user to view our data. So to do this, let's go ahead and run python manage.py create super user and it's going to ask us if we want to use our default computer name and i'll just go ahead and just use my full name there and give it an email and for the password uh it's actually not going to type out as we're typing it's going to be going on in the background but you won't see us so don't get confused by this uh, go ahead and create a password real quick and when you hit enter it's going to ask you to repeat that password Okay, so our super user is created. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is turn on the server and go ahead and log into the admin panel. So let's just do python manage.py run server and see what we have. Okay, so go ahead and open it up in the browser and let's do forward slash admin. And my username is already set up and I think it's already using my password. So go ahead and enter your credentials and hit login. Okay, so this is the default admin panel that Django sets up for us. And as we add data into our uh, database, when we add tables and so on, you'll start seeing those represented right here. And right now, the only data we have here is users. And this is from that create super user command that we ran. So it went ahead and created this information for us and we can actually add more users and update information directly from this admin panel. So I'll go ahead and create a new user and let's just say um, Dennis2 and we'll just give it a password of password123, password123, oops, something didn't match. Oh, it's too common of a password, so I'll go ahead and do something more complicated. Okay, so our user is now in the database and we'll go to users and now we can see both users in there. And if we wanna update information, we can just go ahead here and give, a, give our user a name and change some status here and save it directly from here. And we can also delete that user. So this is a really cool way to interact with our database. It's not the way that you wanna set up an application maybe down the road, you wanna build out um, a, you know, an admin interface for yourself, but it's really cool because setting something up like this and any other platform like Flask or anything like that usually takes a lot of time just to get this basic structure set up. So Django really helps us out a lot by letting us work with this admin panel. So before we start building out our database structure, I wanna introduce you to the concept of models in Django. So Django stores models within our app right here in this models.py file. And what these are are simply Python classes that inherit from Django models and allow us to create classes that represent database tables here. So I drew up a little diagram here. And in this case, we have a, we have a class called product and we want this to create 
a database table for us that would represent all the products that we have in it. So we have an ID, we have a name and a price for the attributes. So we specify the type for each attribute. So in this case, we want the ID to be an auto incrementing number. So it's just gonna be an integer. The name is gonna be a string value and the price we want to be a floating point number. So in this case, when we create this model and actually migrate it with our database, we're gonna get this database table here. So every time we create a product, we're gonna get this table and the instances of this class will represent each row in this table here. So it's actually a pretty simple concept. So I'll just start by creating our first table and this will just be a customer table where we'll store customer information and basic things like their name and what they do. So I'll close this out and in our models.py file, we'll go ahead and start by creating this class called customer. And in here, we'll go ahead and inherit from models.model. And that M is gonna be capitalized and we'll give it our first attribute. So the first attribute is gonna be our customer name and we need to specify a type. So from our models library here, we're gonna do models dot, and then we want this to be a string value. So we're gonna say char field, so character field. And for this, we need to specify the max length by default. So max underscore length. And we'll just set this to 200 for now. And the next attribute we're gonna add is gonna be phone and email. And I'm gonna be lazy and just copy and paste this right here. And finally, I'll just add date created. So date underscore created. And for this, we'll do models dot date time field. And what this is gonna do is take a snapshot of whenever that model or that item was added to the database and hold that and store it in this value. So for this, we're gonna do auto underscore now underscore add. And this just allows us to uh, automatically create that without having to specify when we add this customer to the database. So we're gonna set that to true. And one thing I wanna do for all of these tables is set the null value to true also. And what this is gonna allow us to do is make changes to our database. And if we ever import data and we don't have a name, we're not gonna get any error out of this. So basically it allows us to import a customer with maybe just a name, both no phone, email, or date created. But if we don't have null set to true, it's gonna give us an error and say that we need to set some kind of default value. So in order to add this customer to the database, we need to run another migration. and before we run that migrate command, we need to turn off our server and run something called python manage.py make migrations. And what this is gonna do is first prep our database for that migration. So when we ran migrate the first time, Django already had this migration set up for us. We just needed to go ahead and activate it so the tables, don't, so the tables get created. And Right now, that didn't create any database tables. What it did for us is in our app right here, so in accounts, in migrations, should be somewhere here, here we go. So it created this folder. We have our first migration. And this is kind of like prepping the database for, for the migration that we're about to run. So what it's gonna do is in the background, it's gonna run a bunch of SQL commands and say create model and go ahead and add these items to the database. So nothing happened, we just had to prep it. And we have to do we have to do this every single time we make an update. So in order for that item to actually be added to the database, after we ran python manage.py make migrations, we need to run python manage.py and that migrate command again. So that added the item, that added the, the table to the database now. And if we log into our admin panel, at this point, we can't see anything. And I actually need to turn on my server I'll just go ahead and do this. So when I turn on my server in, a, in the admin panel, we don't see that table yet. So we need to actually register that table with the admin panel. So in admin.py, let's go ahead and import our models. So from models import, and let's just grab our customer model. And to actually register that, let's just do admin.site.register and register the customer model. And that should take care of it. So here we go, we now see customers in the admin panel. 
and I can actually go ahead and add our first customer. So let's just go uh, John Doe, and we'll just do 555 dot, and add some random numbers here, and we'll just say John at gmail.com. And when we save that, we can actually see our first customer added to the database. So in our customer table, we have a customer now. And one thing I wanna do is instead of seeing this customer object and one, I wanna actually see the customer's name. So to do that, we go to our models here and we need to give it a string value. So because this is a Python class, we can just do uh, create a function here, underscore string value and add in self. And we just wanna return the name so we'll just do self dot name. And now when I refresh it in the admin panel, I should see the customer's name. So there we go, John Doe. And we do have an ID here. So here's all the items that we added. And as you can see, it's actually representing what our models file looks like. One thing you don't see is the ID value. And that's because Django actually by default creates that auto incrementing ID. And we could change that. And I normally like to change that to something more dynamic. So I use the UUID method here. Uh, so we have this long character based and number based value that's about 20 characters long, I think. So that way we know to, to never actually get a, um, we never actually get a duplicate ID anywhere. So I'm gonna close this video out by adding two more models to our database so we can actually run those migrations again and I can recap that and prep us for the next video where we will actually create uh, many to one relationships and many to many relationships. And I'll just show you how we can obtain that using Django. So the two models I'm gonna add are gonna be product and orders. And a product will basically just be something that the store carries, like an item like a basketball or a lawn chair. And an order will be something that a customer can place, but it will have reference to a product. So let's just go ahead and create the product first. So we'll do class product and we'll inherit from models dot model and we'll give the product a name a price category and description and date created and I'll just do a little bit of copy and pasting here so a few of these values are just going to be string values so name uh, price will be float, category will just be a string for now, description will be a string, and date created will be the same. And again, our, D will, our, our ID will be created by default, and we want a float field. So float field we actually have not used, so we'll do models dot float field, and I believe that's all we need for a float field. So I'll go ahead and set the default value to, or the default value of null to true, and now we can create our order. So at this point, I won't have that reference to, uh, to a product or a customer yet. So we'll just go ahead and create the model and we'll add the attribute later. So order again, we'll inherit from models.model. And orders is gonna have the attribute of date created and status. So um, in the next video, we'll actually create a customer and a product and it'll point, so the customer will point to a parent customer and a product will be the product that the order is related to. But for now, we'll just comment those out. Um, we won't be using those until I start explaining those relationships. So all we need to do is create date created, which I'll copy and paste here. And we also need to create status. So status will be an order where uh, it'll be a status like delivered, out for delivery or pending. And this is gonna be a string value and status we want to actually be able to change uh we want to be able to change from a drop down menu so i'll just go ahead and build that out right now so what we'll do is in caps well i'm actually going to copy and paste this and i'll explain it we're going to use we're going to set this variable called status here and these are simply going to be tuples and they're going to have a value so because we have this, it's not an actual attribute because it doesn't inherit from models. Uh, we can do 
choices and anytime we're actually creating a new order we'll have a drop down menu and we're going to be able to select one of these and we'll do the same for products and again i'll copy and paste that and for category we want to be able to specify is this an indoor item or an outdoor item so choices are going to be referencing category now so choices and category so again in order to add these to the database we need to repeat something again so we need to do make migrations i guess i'll just type that in manually make migrations and it's prepping that so it's going to say we're going to create an order and a product model so uh, because this is the second migration we're making we have the original one and it just created these ones so it's saying create this model and create this one right here so it's prepping that and we're going to go ahead and migrate that so python manage.py migrate and I wanted to do this just because I wanted to show you how this step is, uh, how we need to repeat this every time we're making a change. So we went ahead and added those tables and in the admin panel, instead of importing them individually, I'm just gonna go ahead and use this. So it imports all of our models and I will go ahead and duplicate that and say product and order. So now when we go home here, we need to turn on the server again. And I actually don't need to turn on and off my server. I can actually open up another uh, command prompt here and just have the server running. But I like to turn it on and off just for uh, just for the purposes of showing what I'm doing. So you can just turn on another one here. And let's go to our admin panel. So now we see customers, orders, and products. So when we add a product, we'll see all those items. And for category, where we specified uh, these right here, for category, that's how we're seeing this drop down list, and the same is going to go for order. So, when we change the status, we're able to get a drop down menu from there. So, in orders, add order, we'll go ahead and have these right here. So, um, I'll actually go ahead and just add some items off video, and in the next video, we'll start addressing the relationships and we'll go ahead and build out this piece right here that's going to have uh, the relationship from order, customer, and we'll actually probably build out one more model to represent the many-to-many -many field.